Hello everyone and welcome to the premiere of Pymega 4. Sorry I'm a little bit late, we had some issues. So, Pymega 4, for those of you who do not know, is a modern tribute to the Amiga computer. It's based on modern Debian Linux, and now for the first time in history, as far as I know, Pymega becomes the first multi-CPU architecture emulation standalone bootable operating system on the planet. Before I even start, I would like to address a few issues and concerns. First off, Pymega will not run on your device without a legally owned or obtained Amiga 1200 3.1 Kickstart image. There are certain websites, eBay and Etsy stores, selling this and previous releases without my approval. It's free. I do not condone this type of activity. Some sites will even say that I have permitted this. I have never given a direct blessing to anyone. I have only stated that I don't care about services for burning cards for those who can't. I would not recommend doing this. This is not my image and I do not know what they have done to said images. So I don't condone that. Please don't use any websites, eBay or Etsy. The only place to get it is here from the links below in the description. It is a torrent file, shared. It takes about 30 minutes to download on decent internet speed and will cost you physically maybe $20, including the purchase of a Kickstart ROM for $1.99 on Google Play, Amiga Essentials from Cloanto. If you are a Hyperion owner from a newer Kickstart, you can use your Kickstart file. There is stuff in the README file on how to set that up if you have one of the newer Kickstart type of files. It's so simple and free, you know, you can do this for 20 bucks and a half hour of your time. So now, Pymega 4, runs for the first time on Intel, AMD, and ARM CPUs with UEFI booting capability for Intel and AMD. Um, that includes Intel Macs. And as always, the Raspberry Pi, ARM 4 and 400, and sort of the 5. Due to differences between the new architecture and the original, please remember the Raspberry Pi 5 wasn't even out when I started working on Pi Mega 4 over a year ago. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the latest Pymega, where to purchase and copy your Kickstart ROM files, how to set up devices like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, optional configurations that have been included in this release, what works, what don't, how you can continue the legacy that this has become, and I show the overview and decent steps of what makes this so awesome. As always, a lot of work has went into this creation and upgrade from the former versions all in this one release. If you feel that Pi Mega 4 has been helpful to you, please consider joining my Patreon or simply leaving a super thanks, a thumbs up like, a PayPal tip. Any links in the description are in the about me of this YouTube channel right here. We all hope you enjoy this great release. God bless and enjoy. Once we unpack our 7-zip, we should have an image and a readme file. Now, by default, I use Raspberry Pi Imager, but I will also show Balana Etcher. On my desktop, I have an icon for Raspberry Pi Imager. Your icons will differ from mine. I also have my Kickstart ROM file ready to go. Now, on Raspberry Pi Imager, the newer ones, you can ignore here on Choose Raspberry Pi Device. Say Choose OS, and scroll to the bottom, and select Use Custom. Browse to your path, mine's on my D drive. Choose your image and now choose storage. For my storage, I'm going to be using a 128 gigabyte Samsung micro SD, which I am inserting. All right, and we'll say next. Now on this, would you like to apply operating system customization settings? Just say no. All existing data on your device will be erased. My name will differ from yours. It's in a multi-card reader. Choose yes, and it will prepare to write, and then write the actual disk. Now, this will take longer than Balana Etcher because it goes through a second verification step. If you don't want to verify it, you don't have to. Click cancel when it gets to verify, and we'll continue. After it writes the image, we will eject our card and reinsert it. Etcher's faster, so I'm going to use Etcher this time. Flash from file, Pi Amiga 4. Let it load the image here. Select target. Realtek 250 gig. 
Large drive. Yep, I want to do that one. And flash. Are you sure you want to check the? Yep, uh, I'm sure. Since this is an NVMe on USB Type C, well, three on this old computer, it should flash significantly faster at 300 megabytes. Uh, it's a class three. So five minutes it's going to take. See you in five minutes. So as you can see, our etcher has finished the image. Flash another or quit. I'm going to remove my device. Reinsert my device. Okay, so we've just finished writing our SD card. This step will apply to both Raspberry Pi and Intel users. Eject your card and put it back in. You'll see a 126 megabyte volume. Double click. There's a folder called Kick. Inside is nothing. Pimega 4 will not work, Intel or ARM, without a legally purchased or owned Kickstart file. That file should be a Amiga 1200 3.1 Kickstart ROM named Kick.ROM. Since my ROMs are older, I require a ROM key. Yours may or may not. If you've recently purchased Amiga Forever or the Light Essentials Kit, you need to run it one time to decrypt the ROMs for usage on other systems. With that, we're done. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to eject this card and I'm going to put it into a card reader and I'm going to put it in this Intel Nook PC. F10 for boot devices. Should auto detect and press enter to start the boot process. Now, I should get an error that the ROM does not exist. But Chris, you just copied a Kickstart file. I did, but I copied it for the Raspberry Pi side. How this works is there's two rootfs file systems and one shared home directory. So ARM has its own, Intel has its own. This should error out. Cannot find a ROM. Chris, you just copied the ROM. I understand. We're going to press F12 and we're going to choose Quit. You're going to be turned into a Linux XFCE desktop running oops, Debian 12 Bookworm 64-bit. This is a Core i3, 8 gigs of RAM. She's not very strong, but she's strong for what we are using her for. Open this thing called File System in the top left and sort this alphabetically. Look for a folder called Boot. Inside, you'll see EFI, Grub, and Kick. This is on an Intel platform only. Go into Kick, you'll see it's nothing. Open another window of file system and go to this little 134 meg volume. This is the Pi side. Go into Kick, take these two files, copy them on over. See? Now you're ready for ARM or Intel. Double click on Pi Amiga 4, and she'll just start working. Boot screens are randomized. You might find something you like. All right, luckily we're in purple. The full PyMega configuration of backdrops is up here in the top left. Choose one. It randomly generates a pre-created PyMega 4 backdrop. If you want something else, please feel free to choose something else. Now, some of you may get a display goofiness with a yellow blinking recovery mode and a crash. If you do, you should be able to right-click up here Go to Workbench, Screen Mode, in which you'll choose a 1920 by 1080. This is 1920 by 1080, 32-bit, and hit Save. If I say Save, yes, you're going to get this error message. Intuition cannot reset. At which time, press F12 and then Reset. Your Screen Mode will then apply. This would mainly apply if you have a larger monitor or a monitor with... 4K dimensions. It's up to you, but if you get that message, that's what you do. Now you're ready to rock and roll with PyMega like you always would. Run I demo nine fingers. F10 to quit. There is a little bit of a delay with my capture card. My apologies on that. But timing is on par. And what we got is a 68060 Amiga emulated FP uh, U and no MMU because if you turn on MMU, JIT turns off. You lose your 
JIT. So anyway, the only catch with a 60 to 60 is Shapeshifter will not function because Apple never implemented the 060 for mainstream production and there's no code for it. There's no libraries for it, so Shapeshifter will actually crash. So if you're going to run Shapeshifter, be in the 040 mode. F12 CPU 040 reset. New icons for iDemo, iGame, courtesy of Mr. Renegade, as well as most of these backdrops. Well, Mr. Wiretap for several of the boot screens. Greatly appreciated. Mr. Renegade for his hard work with the Pi MIGA. Wonderful, outstanding work. A little TM there. Yes, Pi Mega is trademarked. Same things as most of the Pi Mega 3. We do have additional updates, configurations, things. Uh, in the new games, we have the new Turk and 2 AGA executable mode. There's several other little fixes for these things. Um, iGame has 4,200, oh, 41.99. I had to delete one that was not working properly. So basically 4,200 games ready to rock. 991 WHD load demos. Now there's also executable demos in the EXE format, like Amiga School, one of my favorites from Soul Strain. That look, reminds me of Michael Jackson, it just does. So many of those demos in executable form, thousands actually, and there's even more. These are the iDemo ones right here, but in this Amiga folder, there's another, oh, thousand or so. And some of these are going to need to be renamed, like Lost in Omami Spaceballs, 42K demo. They're not always the greatest quality demos. Remember, these are 4Ks. They're meant to run on 4 kilobytes, which is an extremely small amount. Lost in Omami, 60 seconds. OCS, 42 kilobyte intro from Spaceballs and Rough Sound System. So there's tons of tons of them in there. And you can go through these 4K, 64K, different executables. So these are additional full executables. There you go. Like, that's just the letter T. These are additionals that aren't mainstream, like a group, like the Black Lotus, one of my favorites, Silk Cut. Eon is also now a WHD load. Just double click on these and you can choose one. Now, Eon is WHD load. That's why these are sitting in here. She's actually an I demo in my favorites. Right there. You can launch this. And that's your executable demo that was WHD loaded. All right. Enough of demos and I demo, but that's just what I use the Amiga for mainly. Audio and demos. This little power button here may or may not work on your system. It's mainly for the Raspberry Pi side. It does simply initiate a host run sudo shutdown minus h now command but different machines don't seem to like it you'll just get a double cursor if you do press f12 quit and then shut down normally through the top left menu normal music mods there's about 6,000 music mods one amiga song from eric schwartz movie to show capability amiga amp as always i pack some two for your listening pleasure. Shapeshifter, we know is 040 mode, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press F12, 6040, and reset. Does not hurt the performance at all. Just helps with some of the executable demos. Another wonderful screen. The lovely Cyber Skull. So now we'll run Shapeshifter, we'll just click Start. Remember, 6040 is the maximum CPU before PowerPC that Apple publicly released and you could play games on it my capture card will not capture audio over this connection so we won't hear anything on this but there's Duke Nukem and it quit and then when we're done with said program or demo or what we choose special and then shut down you're back to Pi Mega. that's what you need 044 it's also you can control it right here maximum or a 500 but this control is more outdated than anything, but it's good for if you need some exact control. All right, these are commodities, or search, I'm sorry. This is Simple Find. It's a search utility to search and find files. This is your UAE configuration control, JIT, CPU speed blitter, ADF insertion. This is your mounter, mounts ISO, ADF, hard drive files, or click cancel. This, of course, is Directory Opus, the file manager. Now, these are all single-click buttons. 
as before. This is SMB Mounter from Mr. Rob Cranley. You can edit my example configuration to have SMB1 networking. Yes, there are newer SMB2 and 3 features, but this is the only one with a graphical interface that I like. This is an archiver called Voodoo X. Unpacks pretty much anything you can throw at it. This is Term 4.8, where you can call BBSs from. Phone book, Atlantic Data Images, is my own personal BBS. Now remember, this is not perfect. I've always said it's never been perfect. You will crash. You crash on a real hardware. You crash on anything. So reset often. All right. Where did I mess up with terms? So I want to start F F12 and quit. Up here at the top, we have volume control, notifications, Bluetooth, if you want to pair a controller, and your wireless. Mine's called Get Off My Wireless. You can also have Ethernet. If your Wi-Fi is not showing on, double click or right click on the Wi-Fi or Ethernet symbol and choose Enable Wi-Fi. Add your own network and then it'll save. Uh, other configurations, we have Amiga Vision, which is Mega AGS 2023 from the Million Dollar Boys, a.k.a. Mega Boys Project. Also, we have Mr. Paul Vince's AGS, version 2.3, works for me. You'll see a flicker fixed scan double screen here. Audio is working. F12, quit that. Also right here is Amiga Live. This is a Intel Linux version. Run this. You can play multiplayer Amiga games with other PyMiga users around the world. Amiga Live, I'm not in full screen for an example, but I'm playing with some Canadian dude. Oops, I just died in the fires of the Thing, but as you can see, Amiga Live, we're doing uh, Alien Breed. If I wanted to, I could uh, go into full screen here. I grab the correct mouse button and do this. Now I'm in full screen mode, so you can see I can enjoy the game, and we both died. Want to go back to Pi Amiga? And she's just going to boot. We're going to enjoy it again. So that's Intel. Well, what about a Raspberry Pi? See the Raspberry Pi logo at the very top? I'll tell you we're booting a Raspberry Pi. Since we copied the Kickstart in step one, we will have the same exact desktop, the same exact everything. Pi Mega 4 will just load VNC on this side. You can VNC into the Pi side. All right, so Amiga Live will not work because it's Intel. Amiga Vision, of course, is the same exact thing we just ran. And Amiga Game Selector, we can run the exact same things as before. And we can run PyMega 4, the readme's on the desktop for PyMega 4. New boot screens. And we're in gray this time. Now you're going to see something here that we have two megs of or two gigs of RAM or two gigs about free. Well, what if I burn this to a larger SD card or something in the line of a SSD even? What you can do is you can go up here to run program and type sudo gparted. Now you'll see here I have one card, dev SDA. See this big? They're all labeled boot, ESP, ARM root, Intel root, Pi home. So I'm going to click this one right here. I'm going to right click, say resize it, and I'm going to drag this over at the arrow. Say resize, and then a little check mark here. Are you sure you want to resize this? Yeah, go ahead. And now that we're done, this is all live. Close this, launch Pi Mega 4 again. Now that two megs free. It's going to be much more. There we go. Nice boot logo with the boing balls. Now we got 38 gigs free. So now your size will vary based on your configuration of card. On the Intel side, we have one gig of RAM. On the Raspberry Pi side, 
we have 512. Depending on your Raspberry Pi, you can crank this up or down. What about Raspberry Pi 5, Chris? You promised us Raspberry Pi 5. I was supposed to have Raspberry Pi 5 done, but one of my developers had a family issue, so that will be released at a later date. So for now, Pi Mega 4 is Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 series, and Intel ARM AMD. All right, so once she's all booted here, I'm just gonna hit this button over here. Boof. And off it goes. System's powering off now. And that's it, the unit's off, the screen froze here to show you the last screen on the boot. If you're on Intel, Raspberry Pi, you don't do nothing, you just boot it and it works. Because they're all the same hardware. PCs, Macs, they're all different. There's a million different combinations for hardware and stuff like that out there, so you might have to tweak it a little bit. I've made it pretty much plug and pray. You know, plug it in, copy your ROM, burn the image, copy your ROM, and boot it. That's it. USB stick, or in this case, I flashed it to the internal drive so I don't have to keep booting from a stick. In the RAM section, you might have to turn the Z3 fast down if your machine doesn't have a ton of memory. One gig. This has eight, so it can run, rock with it. Don't mess with your chip, just tone your Z3 down. Audio, you may have to play under the sound, under the drop down for your sound selection choice if you have a USB sound system or whatever. The initial pairing on Bluetooth devices, depending on the device, sometimes requires you to plug the device in. Example is this PlayStation 3 controller. I don't know what I paired it with. If I turned it on, it's not going to pair. I will simply plug, it, plug this into the front I'm going to quit, and I'm going to plug the device in. There's a Bluetooth authorization request, which I will say always accept. And then my Bluetooth light should link up, and I will go to devices, and we will see here Sony PlayStation 3 adapter, at which time I can connect it. There we go. Sony is connected via Bluetooth. Now, when I launch the Pi Mega 4, or other interface, what I can do is just press F12 when it loads and under input here I can drop this down to PS3 controller see, and then I will just go configuration save resume. Now my PlayStation 3 controller is always connected to Pi Mega 4 if it's turned on before this loads and then I can simply play games and use this as the controller in whatever setup I want. Just press the button, I can get right through it. I don't know if I'm in automatic or... Set. Go. Yeah, I'm in manual. Oh. But as you can see, I can play no problem. F10 to quit. And I'm done. This can auto. This will auto turn off when I shut the unit off. So if, if I press F12 quit and then I actually go to applications, shut down, this light will turn off just like it just did when it turns off the unit. Then if I turn this on, press the power button, turn on the Pi Mega 4 device, whether it be RPI or um, Intel processor device, once connected, once this thing boots, the Bluetooth will actually start and you'll see it sync in a second. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time because I'll let it sit. Press the button again. It should just go to a solid dot, meaning one player connected. There we go. So now it's paired. It's up. It's linked. Bluetooth already because I pressed the button when I booted this. So that's the trick. And then you're good to go. If I were to quit, you would see the Bluetooth is connected with this little greenish blue symbol up top. And then again, of course, shutting the unit down will turn the controller off when you're done. So that's the same for Xbox 360, PS4. PS5 doesn't apparently use Bluetooth. It's some kind of proprietary controller connection. Um, Xbox One controllers work, and Xbox 360s really work really well. They're cheap or any other kind of controller you have, USB or whatever. 
got the same disc in right here, and there we go, much better. Okay, so I'm going to say boot from UEFI file. Um, USB device, EFI, Debian, Grub, and then I'll get the Grub loader. I don't know what I'm going to see on here, but we'll try. So there's the Grub loader. I want to press record on here just in case it decides to start loading the initial RAM disk, same as before. If I can capture this, I'll show that screen. But this is just total crap. This Elgato is junk at best. And you have a variation of boot screens as normal. This is a total disaster of display here. Chicken wings shown. Now we'll launch Amiga Amp. I am using the trackpad. Here's a Hoffman. That sounds okay for those things. Um, you know, Pi Amiga works as normal. You can run Firefox. Now, I did remove Chrome from the dock bar because there's a difference in executable name on how Debian 12 works, yet Firefox still stayed the same. They are available in the host run section. You can play with them. Amiga Game Selector. Now I did turn on the double line spacing so we have a reduced brightness but we don't have the flicker jitter sound native. If you have different sound, press F12, go into sound. Up here at the top you'll see SDL2, built-in analog audio. You might see HDMI or something else and if you select it and then you do configuration and then just hit save, it will save that config of sound. You may have to repeat that for the three. So Amiga Live Intel. Launch this. As long as you're online, you do not need to have Pymega running. F12 quit. And you can hook up a controller. I usually use a PlayStation 3 controller. Now, PlayStation 3 controllers work really well. It will do Bluetooth, but you got to plug them in first. So if I turn this on, it's blinking. I will plug this in. It's a USB. Plug it in wrong. Plug it in right. PlayStation wants to connect via Bluetooth. Sure. Always accept. Great. Now I'll relaunch Amiga Live and you will see that it will say PlayStation 3 controller. I'll try and zoom in. Remember, this is a laptop. So right there, see how it says Sony PlayStation 3 controller on port 1. Cool. And once this goes to green, there we go, I have an excellent ping. You can choose your server location here for, uh, I'm in New York right now, you have Denver, Los Angeles, Europe, the Netherlands, Italy, Greece, Bulgaria, and Australia. So we're covered. We're covered. If there's any games launched, you will see them listed. This is version specific, so Linux will only work with Linux. So you'll see different people as Pymega 4 progresses having these run. Change your initials here too for your net play game. It could be Quicks, it could be anything else. You want to play a game? Choose it from the drop down list. This does not scroll very well, so you have to move the mouse down and it will scroll. It will remember your last position. So you can do test controller and then you can say start. It's just the test controller. But play offline if you want to play single player mode. This is actually just a test controller and Bluetoothable. That's just one. I double, I double mouse button and drag out of this window. It's hard with a laptop because I have a trackpad. But if I double click left the mouse, right but left mouse button, right mouse button, and I can go down here and say stop FSUAE, and then refresh. This will get this out of here in a minute. Same would apply for any game you want to play offline. Like if I wanted to, and I'm just showing you this on a laptop. I'll do Abuse AGA. Um, we are our local player. Number of players is one. Starting Sony PlayStation 3 controller as my default. Now what I'll do is close this window before the thing loads. FSU is going to load. I will then uh, make this big full screen. There we go. Um... I don't know what it's supposed to be. I'll just use that. I don't know. There we go. Correct.com. 
And sound works, game works, this is Abuse AGA, I'm playing on a PS3 controller on a laptop. I have no idea how to play this game, I don't know what it is. We all know that one. It just works. Am I manual transmission? Yes I am. And then shut down via the logout menu here. Shut down. When you're done, this turns the machine off. Remove this disk. And then you're back to your own host OS. Where if I was to press this button, I would then have my normal Windows automatic repair. Awesome. Not every laptop's going to work. Not every Intel processor is going to work. Some you're going to get some goofy graphics, especially if you're trying to 4x3 it. So now this will boot my host operating system of Windows back with the username of user. When you're done, shut your machine down like normal. This is your everything. This is everything you got. You don't have to run it on this. You can run it on a thumb drive. You could run it on an NVMe uh, SSD. This is the NVMe from the Intel Nook. First, boot up your system. If it looks weird and gives you a recoverable alert and you get one of these things, what you can do is click up here, and it's hard to see, but the top one, like right click, workbench, screen mode, and then just make sure you have this in something awesome like well, my monitor can't do 1920, but I'll do 16 by 9. I'll just say save, say yes. You're going to get an error. Press F12 and then simply choose reset. And then it'll boot normal. Now, if you have two displays, you're going to see a blank window on one of them because, you know, these things were never designed for multiple windows, multiple displays. So that's how you can get your desktop back. So I right clicked in the top. And I went to workbench screen mode. Uh, it's designed for 1920 by 1080, but as you can see, works fine on 16 by 9. And then I'm going to verify my sound. Click this built in audio or my external speaker. And then I can just start playing stuff. Cool. So, this is one of the things Playmiga can do. This is Windows 3.1 running PC task. So if I quit this, exit Windows, where did we get the lead I think it is? Okay, then we can be a Macintosh with Shapeshifter, 68040 mode. There's was 8.1. When you're done with that, you know, it's got programs and whatever you want on it. Uh, choose special and then shut down. You're back to Pymega. And then if you want to be a freaking stupid Atari ST, you can be an Atari ST. Don't ask me why you'd want to do that. No! And there's your piece of crap desktop for Atari ST. Look how horrible that looks. Oh, God. Let's get rid of that. I mean, it boots super fast on Intel. I mean, it is quick. Here we are on a 27 inch iMac. I'm using a PC keyboard, so I held down Alt. I'm going to choose UEFI boot. And welcome to Grub. This is on a Mac, you can see. Loading Intel Mac 27 inch 2016, I think it is i5 I don't think this is a USB 3 port I plugged it into but we're going to see 1920 by 1080 boom sound works don't know how to turn it down ultimate irony this is a i5 Mac I'm going to run shapeshifter on it to run Mac OS 8 on a Mac that's Emulating Pymega, running on Linux. Hilarious. New Calora, running on Pymega 4, on a 27 inch iMac, Intel. So it sounds great. Here is my 
2016 i7 MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's gonna air out. This is normal. So I just take my mouse, once it loads, right click in the top of your board. This trackpad is sensitive. Whoops. Oh my. Screen mode. Set yourself a screen mode as high as I can get it. 1280 by 800 on this one. Crank the colors up, good enough. Hit save, and then yes. And then you're gonna error out, you gotta press F12, which is function F12, hold on. Function F12, and choose reset. And now it'll boot. I make a four with the boing balls. And we'll have a resolution we can use. How does sound work out of the box? Well, let's see. Music mods. Yeah. Cool. So I had to turn my volume up in XFCE desktop. Now we're going to relaunch Pimega 4. Oh, yeah. Perfect. How do demos work? Nine fingers. Works perfect. So that's it. That is Pimega 4 for 2024. Sorry I was late. Things happen. Anyway, I want to call out a special thank you to Mr. Paul C., Spaceman Renegade, Wiretap True, Mr. Staney, and Wummel for their above and beyond contributions to this release and the many others that have assisted along the way. We hope you all enjoy PyMega 4 this time and let me know what you can get this thing running on on various Intel or Macintosh platforms. It'll be interesting to hear from you guys in the comments below. If you're having any trouble or need some live assistance, there are links in the About Me page of this YouTube channel where you can hop on the PyMega Discord and get some additional assistance. If we don't answer you right away, we will. So thank you for your support. If you enjoy Pi Amiga, please consider a donation or contribution to either Patreon, PayPal tip, super thanks, or just a like or a subscribe. We all thank you very much. Have a great year. We'll see you in future videos. Thanks for watching, and we hope you learned something.